welcome to episode 59 of our Family Travel Australia series. This week we commence our journey from the outback to the ocean with an overnight stay in the sleepy town of Alpha, famously known for its fossilised wood. We spend a week camping at one of our absolute favourites, Lake Maravoon, and immerse ourselves in the nearby sapphire gem fields, exploring underground mines and fossicking for hours for these precious gemstones. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling today, Jasper? Good. Good. What are we doing, mate? We are, we have just left the wonderful destination of Winton. Wasn't that amazing? Yeah, I feel a little bit sad about leaving yeah. Winton actually. It's such an awesome place. It's definitely left a mark on us, yeah. hasn't it? Do you know, we, we, back for. we have to give a really big shout out here to a gentleman named John Elliott, who really looked after us yeah. and basically paved the way for us to have such an amazing time and explore the region so thank you John thank you John hopefully you've subscribed to the channel <laughs> <laughs> we will be back we will be back yeah, to, sure. to steal your power and water um, now we are as Jasper said on the way to Lake Maraboon uh, which is just outside of Emerald about 20 minutes west uh, to hopefully go and explore again that whole gem field region Yes, do some more fossicking, Jasper. Fantastic. This, yeah. this time I'm, I'm going for it. I'm, I'm looking for the big nugget. Will we find a big nugget, Jasper? Yes. Good. But Good. Like, but I'll throw all the other nuggets away. Yeah, just that's right. I only keep the good stuff. So we have got quite a lot of kilometres in front of us. We'll probably stop in Barky. Hey. Hey. The Calden. <laughs> And thanks to everybody too yes. who commented and wrote in to give us the cor correct pronunciation. <laughs> and, and we now know the locals just refer to it as Barky. Barky, so and that's so much easier. We're going with it. Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready to have fun, Jasper? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Bye. Bye. Sneaky chance for us to grab some lunch. Hello. Hello. There's one Winton fly in here. There is a Winton fly in There's here. There's a Winton fly in here, is there? What do you reckon his name is? Here he is. Bing, we just were driving through a little town which has got loads of loads of old train stuff and old old vehicles. Old vehicles. Do you know what it was called? It was called Machinery Mile and Machinery Mile. Yes, and there's old trains, old tracks, everything. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And we'll stop there on the way back, okay? Yeah. Right now we have pulled over at a little pit stop, little rest stop. Kate's making us a good little uh, salad wrap. You can see where we are. We've got one other person at the rest stop, that guy there. Look at that landscape, isn't that amazing? It's incredibly dry, isn't it, Jasper? Yeah. Um, but you know what, they're, these rest stops are great because they're only um, every sort of, I don't know, 50 kilometers, I think. And great spot to stop for a bit of food. Quick wee stop, did you have a wee? No. Oh, you didn't this time. No, but it's always useful. All right, we're almost done. We're almost done. We can have this and keep back Where? There! Wow, they are beautiful. I'm gonna leave you and mummy to it. I've got to go do some jobs. <laughs> All right, 
Polly's gone to do some blue jobs. Jasper and I are gonna check out the Tourist Information Center here in Alpha, and we're gonna ask where we need to go to find, what Jasper? Our own magic wood. Yeah, all right, let's go check it out. Check this but, out, Jasper. Well, first, yeah. let's look at this. Beautiful, Beautiful flowers in the garden. Aren't they just gorgeous? Yeah. And come over here, stand up next to this, Jasper. Look at this, this is the flood level guide. Holy dooly, you're all very close to the 2010 flood level. Look at that. Isn't that hard to believe? places early in season one Lake Maraboon and we've just come out of Alpha the sleepy little one horse two pub town wasn't it great it was. we stayed at the Alpha caravan park great grassy sites they've got new owners new management and they were doing a great job uh, the facilities were really good it's pet friendly and I just loved all the gum trees and oh, yeah. birds. Uh, the bird Waking life. up to yeah. the sound of the birds was just awesome very good now Alpha is uh, part of the Dig the Tropics. The Dig the Tropic Trail. Trail yeah, that's right. absolutely. Which basically follows the Tropic of Capricorn mm -hmm. all the way from Yapoon on the coast, out past Winton, Opleton, towards the Queensland border. It's excellent. There are so many stops that you can stop and not only like do something amazing like the Capricorn Caves just out of Rockhampton. Amazing. But you can fossick for all different kinds of gemstones as well and well Alpha is famous for petrified wood. Yeah you guys got to go and find where the hidden treasures were. I actually oh, love fossicking. Nice. I've, I've discovered that in myself now that we've been doing this and out in the we've road. Done, well we've done a a bit of it since Look, we've been started. We have, but I, I haven't found the, <laughs> you know, the elusive big one. The retirement nugget. Um, I, I love it though. I, I love that you can uncover something that hasn't been uncovered for millions of years, you know, or it's been developed over millions of years and no one's ever seen it. And, but yeah. And made by nature. That's what I love. I mean, some of the opals that we saw when we were in Winton. The yeah, sapphires yeah. at Ruby Vale. I'm, I'm more um, impressed with how much it may yield in dollars. Yeah, well, keep working on that, hey? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Keep digging. Keep fossicking. All right, Jasper, you ready to go? Yep. Let's do it. over the last 13 months and there's a handful of places that have really been special. Yeah this is definitely one of those places and it's also one of the places that we like to stop and take a week if we can. A little breath. Yeah just mm. to set up, unwind and just really enjoy being in such a beautiful natural environment. You can you can see a little bit I mean it, it is this natural Aussie bush environment. Uh, in the background, I'll get the drone up in a little minute, uh, particularly when that incredible sun is setting mm. over the Fernburn Dam, which is 
at currently at about 10 percent yeah it's low yeah it's very low i think we were here just a year ago mm. and it was at 14 percent mm. but la nina oh well what's its incredible way. is that even low there is a massive amount of water <laughs> yes. out there the it dam is huge. is huge when it's full and that's right la nina is apparently coming which means lots and lots of rain hopefully for many areas of australia when this dam is full i read today it is five times the size of sydney harbour which is hard to believe hard to fathom epic. how much water will be absolutely out there absolutely epic we must come back for that yeah the park is fantastic um a quick wrap for these guys the owners beautiful yeah, yeah. family owned and operated and friendly faces yeah. uh, they have uh the on-site restaurant as well restaurant and bar which is fantastic okay so one of the the biggest draw cards here is red claw um, i'm going to chuck on the end of this segment my red claw experience from last visit with ron, ron and, lynn. and lynn yeah yeah hi guys <laughs> hopefully you're still subscribed and watching uh, because that was awesome but red claw is, is a major part of the experience if you're coming here mm. so they've now got their own red claw wine label mm. They've got their Red Claw beer, which we enjoyed last time we were here. And we were told no Red Claws were harmed in the making of either of those products. Uh, yeah, the restaurant is fantastic, mm. isn't it? You can go up for dinner or just go and sit by the pool and enjoy a beverage or a cocktail. There's takeaway operating all through the day. Yes. I believe they deliver as well. I've seen them scooting around on the little mopeds and then the golf cart delivering pizzas and you fantastic. name it. Yeah, it is really fantastic. There's the accommodation options other than the powered mm. sites, which, you know, I think are quite large, particularly where we are. We're in the naughty corner, <laughs> which we were last time as well. There's nothing naughty going on. No, it's very quiet. It's one of those parks that is a fantastic blend between caravan park and natural, yeah. almost that, you know, Old free school. camp mm. setting where you, you don't feel crowded. It's not noisy. Mm. You've got plenty of gorgeous environment to look out on. I mean, mm. we're facing the dam, so that sunset of an afternoon is spectacular. That, that would be my hot pick. Um, pick the naughty corner. Yeah, it is good down here. <laughs> <laughs> look, the park has been almost full. Mm. Uh, we are in school holidays. Um, there's still a handful of sites left, but last time we were here, it was it was quiet. Not really any noticeable change in... As far as noise goes, no. It's no. been really awesome. Yep. Um, plenty for the kids to do. The pool, Jasper loves. There's a kid's pool oh and then no. there's a bit of a slide and, and whatever. It's mm -hmm. not over the top. It's, you know, it, it's subtle, but just enough, I think. Yep. You can also hire the little pedal cars for the kids. Other accommodation options, um, the cabins. Mm -hmm. I think they've got a spa cabin as well. Oh, nice. That'd be nice to Give try. Give that a try. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got the dams. So you can hire a kayak. You can hire a boat. Yeah. Go down, get out on the dam. Fish, it's fully stocked Yeah. with fish. Yeah. It's stocked with red claw. <laughs> I mean, you can just go down there and, and hang out and play in the water as well. So there is loads to do. And spectacular sunsets mm. every night. Yeah. You know, so yeah, anyway, like we love it. It's one of those special places. If you are going to head out to central Queensland, to the highlands, make this a definite stop for at least a few nights, mm. uh, about 20 minutes out side of the emerald so yes. that'll give you a good idea of where it is that's right a great base to mm. explore it's a great base to explore area. the gem fields as mm. well isn't yes. it yes we've been out to the gem fields three times yeah we have this mm. time we just couldn't get enough of fossa king it's i don't think we we've didn't, we didn't find any treasure <laughs> i don't think we've even covered our fuel <laughs> mm. but that's all right one day we're going to find it here's hoping
Here we are, Ruby Vale. We have had an awesome time here. We're actually in the public area. We've gone online, got ourselves a Fossa King license. That was so super easy, and it was $12.40 for a family license for a month. I know, which means you can actually <laughs> Fossick anywhere <laughs> in Queensland. So yeah. treasure may be yet to come, who knows? I don't think we actually found any treasure today. I have enjoyed feeling like a treasure hunter though. A couple of a little stones yeah. we've got to check out and um, some pretty rocks as Jasper calls them, <laughs> which was great. Last time we visited Rubyvale uh, and Sapphire region, we actually did the tourist trail. We went, um, got a bag of wash. The wonderful thing about that is that you're almost guaranteed to actually find some sapphire. So with kids and younger ones, that is a perfect way to do it. Coming out here though, and getting to actually really get hands on, get the gear, sieve, wash it, dig for it, I've loved. Oh, it's been awesome. Mm. Me too. I've really loved that. Jasper has loved that. And I think it's really opened our minds up to what actually goes on. For these people who live out here and work mm. out here and make this their their life and their livelihood, being Incredible. out and, and away from those tourist attractions really does open your eyes to it, doesn't it? It sure does. And we actually uh, got introduced to an incredible family out here. They are part of the history that has really made this story. And that is the Brown family, Peter and Eileen, and their two sons, Mitch and Tyler, that have built this family business from really that initial, you know, 40 odd years ago when Peter dug his first hole, found his first sapphire. Mm -hmm. I got to speak to Peter and he shared his story of, of how they've been able to manage it through the boom and the bust. It is truly a remarkable story and a wonderful example of Australian tenacity, isn't it? Mm, oh, yes. Yeah. The gem fields here, the Sapphire, Ruby Vale region, an absolute must for you to bring your family, mm. come out and experience this region. It is a hidden gem. It is a hidden gem and yep. it is super accessible it is only a few hours from the coast or if you are traveling out back it is located in queensland central highlands so it's definitely worth coming for a pit stop come and stay over or come for a day trip and experience what life is like out here it is awesome don't forget your pick and your sieve Well, my first love when I came here when I was 21 was pitching a tent out in the bush and I just fell in love with it. When I came into Ruby Vale, I thought this is a, a lifestyle that's made for me because I can live in the bush, enjoy the bird life, the kangaroos, the sugar gliders, cook around a campfire and I can also go underground, go digging for these beautiful gems and make a living out of it. Well, that was my initial passion for the place. I just, I know when I arrived from Christchurch, wet and miserable winter in May in Christchurch and drove in here to Ruby Vale and I actually got a really good memory of leaving Emerald and driving towards these little mountains in the distance and getting closer and closer to where these sapphires were found. So I said I'm going to make my fortune as a 21 year old and I'm going to be my own boss. And when I got here I found all you needed was a $5 minus right and you could peg some land to make a living out of. You could go and peg a, a camp area that you convert into a homestead lease and you could have that for whatever you were doing as long as you liked and it was five dollars a year and I said they threw these laws out in most countries over a hundred years ago and when I arrived here and pitched a tent in beautiful sunny days every day I said I think I've died and gone to heaven this is my ideal place to live in the bush and to build my own house make a living out of sapphire mining I thought that's my plan that's what I really want to do first shaft I put down something that was an old time of working on the side of policeman creek and the shaft was 10 feet down got down to the layer of wash at the bottom 
and got really excited about finding little tiny blue pe pebbles and little water-worn sapphires. And I was excited about all the little ones. And they said, oh, yeah, you'll get better ones than that. But the first decent stone I found, which was in the first week, was a 22 carat really deep blue. And, and somebody said, oh yeah, that's a really nice stone. And I said, how much do you reckon it's worth? And there were tie buyers here who go down the road and cash in. And they said, oh, you probably get about $250 for that stone. I thought, that's more than a month's worth of wages that I was earning in New Zealand. And, and this will do me. That's the excitement of finding this. And it was a really dark stone, so it wasn't a cutter. So I thought, this is, this, is, this is the life I'm gonna enjoy forever, you know? But every single day that you go mining, it's like, like a lotto. You, you, you work hard to dig it all out, and at the end of the day, it's just a surprise whether you're going to get something really nice that day or just a few, just an average. When I met Eileen in 1980, she was from California, from a banking family in California, and she was a backpacker when she came. And I said, are you sure you're going to be able to live here? I said, we, we both, we fell in love virtually immediately and, and thought we, we're going to plan to get married and stuff like that in the future, but I'll have to go back to America and meet your parents and all that sort of thing. But her visa was running out, so we went down to immigration and they just said, to try and extend her holiday visa, and they just said, for all I know, you met this guy downstairs five minutes ago, get married or get out. And I said, we'll just get married, you know. And she was like, oh, that's not how you're meant to propose in that island. I'll tell the story better than I can tell it, you know, but she was a deal. I said, we'll just get married, because we knew that we were going to in the end. Her skills were writing, administration, figures. She did banking as a background. She helped her father in the banking business in San Francisco, worked, you know, as a teller and all that sort of stuff. So she had really skills, good skills that I didn't have. I, I would hardly ever write anything down. Everything's kept in the head, you know. So that made us a perfect team to, to develop the Ruby Vale Gem Gallery and to do all the business and just, you know, to, to develop the whole project. And, and, and my skills might be the mining and the gem cutting and the, and the jewelry making and the jewelry design. But now with, this, with, with Mitch and Tyler come on board with us, we've each got our own separate areas. Tyler's become really good at setting, really good at jewellery making, does cutting, still does the mining, all the maintenance. Mitch does a lot of marketing in the CAD design, modern types of design for more uniform types um, settings and that sort of thing. So we've got all our skills and we really balance the whole spectrum from the mining side of it, the practical side of it, and, and right through to the retailing and the, and the value adding and Mitch has really mastered the social media and the marketing online so it's just fallen into place so now we're I'm probably busier now than I ever was you know so but it's great it's a it's a great business to be part of. Every kid likes to find a bit of treasure they like the treasure hunt and 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 even the tiniest sapphires that you, you know we could hardly pick up with a pair of tweezers you could say oh look at this and look at the color in that you know so that's the, the and that's the same joy that i get at finding little stones in that today or finding those really pretty ones you never lose that idea of finding something that's been spat over out of a volcano maybe 50 million years ago was formed away down the earth's mantle maybe 200 million years ago and you're the first one to pick it up and do something with it. That's, that's this part that's really special to me, you know. And you know we're in a really lucky country because there's nowhere else in the world that a precious gemstone mining area is so accessible, is as safe and accessible as what this place is and any kid or any person and find a beautiful stone and some of the really nice stones are found by kids because they're close to me oh pick one up and say what's this one worth you know it could be a beautiful green or whatever so the kids can still got just as great a chance of finding a nice gem as what their parents have
Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. As you can see, we have purchased a bag for Jasper to go through, and it's ended up Katie. <laughs> you love this thing. Reader, <laughs> can I throw Possibly away the more big if ones? I didn't have my child with me. <laughs> throw away my big one? No, can you just put them here on the table? No, don't throw them away. Yeah, that was really good listening. I love that you listened to yeah, me. Yeah, it was amazing. Holy dooly, Mitch. That's not. We should do a video on parenting. We're really good at it. Bye. Nice pick, babe. Thanks. The gem fields. Here we are in Rubyvale. We're actually in the public fossicking area. Hey, check that. I've got all the gear, the sieve, the pick, and we've been actually in there digging ourselves mm -hmm. into a hole. <laughs> I think that one's poo. <laughs>